Today we're looking at the Radio Rex, which is probably the first voice-activated uh, device ever made. It has a vocabulary of one word, uh, or at least it has one action, because there are many words that will activate Rex. Basically anything with the X sound in it, which is the 500 hertz, basically, which activates this harmonic oscillator. Uh, very, very primitive. Uh, the first patent on this, well, with that, this toy actually has four patents, uh, came out in 1913. Uh, and basically all it is, is it's a mechanical lever action uh, that when actuated uh, engages an electromagnet that keeps the actuator stationary. And then when you say Rex, the, the box basically picks up the harmonic uh, using a weight here on the side, which is tuned via lead. So this is a kid's toy, by the way. It's just got this big old blob of lead hanging on it. So this is basically a copper natural uh, harmonic oscillator and the vibration that picks up into the toy itself vibrates this and eventually it disconnects so we'll look inside but first i'll show you the operation i'll show you all four sides here so here's the back you can see the original battery that was still in here it was still 0.5 volts but it had i mean it was just a a dry cell that was all messed up and when you tried to load it at all <coughs> it couldn't deliver any power so you know after 100 years i'm not going to fault that so i picked this up at a store called uncommon objects in austin uh probably about a decade ago and i haven't used it since before youtube was probably really as big as it was or I probably would have put a video up then. So Rex was basically a little celluloid dog. Uh, it's one of the first um, uses of celluloid as a lightweight device. Uh, you know, pool balls, pool cues were obviously the, the first or maybe it's not obvious. But um, So basically what you do is you stick Rex in the dog house and then when you say Rex he pops out. Now Rex is very fragile. Most of these Radio Rexes don't actually have the dog anymore. He has long since passed. Uh, Rex only weighs a quarter of an ounce, so he's incredibly light. Uh, he's basically two, uh, I want to say injection molded parts, but obviously in the 19 teens, early 1920s, injection molding wasn't a thing. So, um, you know, he's basically two pieces glued together. You can see the seam goes all the way down here. So, unfortunately, I don't really know uh, too much about manufacturing 100 years ago when it comes to plastics. Um, so what I have instead of Rex is I have a, a very lightweight box. Now, last time I used this thing, I'd never used a 3D printer, um, but now I've used them a lot. Um, this weighs eight, eight grams, which Rex weighs nine grams. Uh, so it's basically the same weight. If you put something too heavy in there, Rex won't come out because the actuator is uh, pretty weak. So. Enough ado about that. Let's let's get Rex to actuate. Uh, so what you do is you push it in and it engages. And then when you say you have, it's kind of a low, you gotta get the 500 hertz. But Rex, and he doesn't always work. Rex. So he shoots out Rex. And again, Rex is fragile, so he's a retired old dog. I'm gonna leave him alone. So let's look inside this thing. It's very very simple. Uh, well, first of all, let's look at the bottom. It's got a really nice little. Uh, instruction piece here talking about uh, it says one of the famous teletoys manufactured and sold only by the John Hugo manufacturing company got the you know American address made in America yeah uh, has some directions here uh, don't leave them pressed in the back obviously as long as uh, Rex is pressed in the back the electromagnet is engaged so it will kill your your battery if you leave them engaged all the time uh, it talks about how to remove it uh, let's see Let's see, the battery is of standard size, so it's a D cell basically, standard size, and can be replaced by any dealer in flashlights, or will be sent by us parcel post prepaid upon receipt of 10 two cent stamps. So if you send them 20 cents, and you know, I think they made this into the mid 20s. Uh, obviously, this one was made after September 24th, 1918, since that is a date on it. Uh, it's got a serial number as well, it's number 80,627. So uh, the Radio Rex should be green. This one has faded. Uh, when you look in certain spots, and particularly when you look uh, underneath this mechanical lever, you can kind of see the green there. I don't know how much of that green is the actual copper feet, uh, bleeding into it, but I do know that this should be green, and it has just faded. Roof is red, obviously, and it's, it's retained its color a bit. Um, so I'm going to open this guy up. To open it up, there's a latch here, and you basically pull this latch. Um, and then I think probably when it was new, it would just come down. But at this point, the wood has gotten a bit tight. 
So I have to put something in there and push it open and try not to mar anything up. I'm going to use this open-ended wrench here. And I'm just going to push on the back, make sure I'm not pushing on the... Okay, anything that's sensitive. Okay, it's almost there. There it is. Okay. It might have always been that tight, but this was made 70 years before I was born, so I don't really know. I wasn't there. So this guy folds down. Uh, inside we basically see uh, I have a period incorrect uh, brand new Duracell battery that I just threw in there. I took the label off to try to make it a little better. Uh, you can see that all this is is just a little actuator. The uh, signal starts here on the positive side, comes through this electromagnet. There's no second lead off the electromagnet because it actually shorts back up to the back side of this metal plate. Uh, this is actually copper plate. All the metal in here is copper because copper in 1920 wasn't was nearly as expensive and it's easy to mold uh, mold form. Uh, wire comes through over to here. This is just two uh, copper pieces that are just wound around. Um, so all this does is it vibrates and then it disconnects. And then the other side of this lead comes around and connects the other side. So very, very simple circuit. When you actuate it there and then you hit the 500 hertz, you can actually see this move. So interesting the wideband noise doesn't actually do you have to really go rex although maybe since the case is open it's not going to do it but even just a light little tap will pick it up so anytime this moves the actuator opens that's basically how it works and this of course just shoots the dog out and this actually has quite a bit of holding force i don't have a scale but i'm actually pulling up on that pretty hard um so pretty neat uh, one of the things that i found humorous uh this is held in with a nail so this is just a standard roofing nail, or, you know, not roofing nail, but just a little 10-penny rail. Now, this thing had decayed quite considerably. I had to take all the contacts apart because uh, in the uh, early days of, of electronics, uh, you know, the, the material scientists were also way behind, just like the electricians were. Uh, the material science on this is that copper uh, is almost never used uh, in, an, in an actual conductor uh, on the exterior side. So the core of the conductor will always be copper if you have a good material. Uh, but the outside will always be some kind of stable um, metal, typically a noble element of some kind, gold, platinum, palladium, etc., that doesn't have any stable oxides. Uh, copper, when it oxidizes, uh, it has an incredibly high uh, resistance. It's something on the order of a thousand times higher than its... Uh, uh, non-oxidized state. Now copper oxidizes very readily uh, in the presence of oxygen, uh, which is why you'll see all the copper roofs and statues or whatever, they're all green. That's the copper oxide. You can still see where the copper oxide is here. Now I considered putting um, some kind of anti-corrosive grease on here, but it was anachronistic to, uh, to actually put it on here because since that had not actually really been invented or studied or figured out yet. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it there, uh, keep oxidizing, and it probably means in another 50 years or whatever it will have oxidized to a state where it needs to be taken apart again. Um, hopefully I'll still be alive then, but we'll see. Um, so the, the path here, it's a really just amazing, the, the, the screwmanship. Now you can obviously tell this screw is not original. It's a Phillips head and it has a, a flat slot in it. This, this technology had not really been matured yet. The screw on the bottom is a flat head, and I, I do believe it is correct. Uh, this is the only piece that I think is not original, uh, of course, in the battery. Um, so we'll put this guy back together, and you can see the electrical conductive path has to go through the nail and through here. This was the highest uh, ESR portion of the device. Uh, it had something like 450 millivolts dropping across it at half an amp, so pretty high resistance. And, and Rex works well now, so there it is back together again. And again, all I got to do is do that. Now this is tuned via just lead. They just put lead solder on it. It's tuned so that the Rex sound does it. Now the one of the things I find is interesting is this is a kid's toy, uh, and it actually requires that that 500 hertz is actually pretty low in the in kind of the male voice. Um, you know, women can of course actuate it as well, but it's um, kids probably had to scream pretty loud uh, to to actuate it. So that is Radio Rex. Show it a couple more times here. I'm not going to scream. I'm just going to hit the actuator. You know, pretty neat, fun little toy. Um,